So let us start discussing on wind storms and cyclones. I'm sure that you have heard about winds. You have heard about thunderstorms, haven't you? I'm sure the area where you live, uh, the whichever part of, the, uh, of India it, it is, since India is mostly having tropical climate, most of the places have thunderstorms where uh, th there is very uh, strong winds with thick, heavy clouds in the sky, with lightning and thunder, with heavy rains. That's thunderstorms, right? Then uh, you you might have heard about cyclones, cyclones, which cyclones are uh, are natural uh, forces or strong winds. It's also called hurricanes, which can cause huge damage and can really make big changes in the climatic conditions when the hurricanes happen. And um, then there are things like tornadoes, which is again, which is mostly common in North North America. You don't find a lot of tornadoes in India, in fact. Uh, so all these are different types of um, of you know winds uh, or climatic conditions I can say which kind of uh, ha will have a heavy impact on the way uh, it manifests with strong winds, lightning, heavy rain, sometimes a lot of natural disaster which can lead to, uh, because of the heavy rains and heavy uh, because that lead to flooding and uh, also the strong winds can lead to a lot of uh, creating a lot of damage and so on so so we are going to look at why these things happen what is the reason why thunderstorms happen why winds happen why hurricanes happen why turn tornadoes happen what are the reason what exactly happens in the atmosphere which leads to all these various um, you know uh, phenomena or like the hurricane cyclones or thunderstorms and so on that's what you're going to see in this in this specific session and for that first you need to have a strong a, a proper idea about um, certain aspects in physics like what is pressure what is atmospheric pressure why and and how does the pressure vary right and and so on so these are some of the things that we'll be looking at first but before jumping into all that I want to give you a feel of what all these things mean what does hurricane mean what does uh, a, a you know uh, so, so hurricane and cyclone is, is the same stuff there's no difference between hurricanes and cyclones they're, they're just uh, uh, the same name for I mean the two different names for the same thing but how does a thunderstorm look like how does a tornado look like right so I want you to give uh, to get that excitement in you I want to first show you how these things look like and then we will jump into some aspects of science which later on will be used to explain how these various uh, phenomena of hurricanes and uh, uh, thunderstorms and so on will happen so uh, so let me show you a glimpse of what uh, how does a hurricane look like hurricane uh, is something where there will be heavy rain very strong winds which can create which can cause damage to property and so on and we'll actually in fact see uh, see that here in this video now here he is showing satellite picture of how the cyclone looks like and you can see the cyclone here right and how it is moving this is a satellite picture and see what is happening when the cyclone is coming heavy rain right you can see heavy rain very strong winds and look at the sound see the heavy rain and and uh, heavy wind right now uh, I'm just forwarding a little you can see the effect of the strong wind and in the course of time you can see that the the you can see you can see here how the roof has been pulled out because of the wind because strong wind has been flowing over the roof and the wind is kind of just pulling that roof out and you can see what's happening to the roof here right and why that is happening there is a reason for I can and be like we'll come out with an explanation for that why that is happening uh, we can explain that using physics so you can see the effect of uh, the hurricane right see how what's happening now it's damaging the roof 
of the petrol bunk and the heavy rain and very strong winds which is ripping off the roof of that uh, petrol bunk so this is hurricane right the winds in the hurricane can be from a uh, in, in a speed of 30 kilometers per hour all the way to 100 150 km 200 kilometers per hour that kind of strong winds uh, will be there when the hurricane happens and that is what really creates a lot of havoc a lot of natural calamity and uh, you know people uh, lose their homes you know it creates a lot of damages so that actually is a glimpse of hurricane now next I want to show you thunderstorms right now in thunderstorms you can see how thick the clouds are you have very thick clouds and um, you know accompanied by rain and lot of lightning and thunder right so that's what happens in thunderstorm so here again you can hear the sound of the wind right and you can see the lightning see look at the lightning again that is the important feature of a thunderstorm right and accompanied by wind and in fact the thunder that's the sound that you hear is in fact because of the lightning and we'll see why that is we'll look at that later on so you can see how a thunderstorm is thick clouds very very thick clouds with heavy rains actually here the rain is not happening but down there there is heavy rain going on and there's lightning and accompanied by thunder right so that is what how the thunderstorm looks like oh my you can see again the thick you can see the thick clouds right around so that is about thunderstorms right and what about tornadoes now tornadoes is a feature which is mostly seen in North India uh, not uh, not in North American uh, sub, uh, continent you don't see that a lot in India but you see that a lot in uh, North America and here this is actually showing a tornado right now what is this tornado tornado is this you can see this funnel shaped um, you know funnel shaped kind of cloud I can say that is a tornado and it, it acts like a vacuum pump right it sucks whatever which comes in its way that funnel will suck whatever which comes in its way it could be uh, vehicles it could be houses whatever right which comes it uh, it acts like a have you seen the vacuum cleaner what does a vacuum cleaner do vacuum cleaner can suck in whatever which comes in its way right so it is somewhat it this works somewhat like a vacuum cleaner and that uh, that funnel that you see here right which kind of touches down onto the earth and comes all the way from the sky right and that funnel kind of can suck in all sorts of things uh, which is coming in its way so this is tornado so you've seen tornado you've seen uh, thunderstorms right so this is a this is thunderstorm right that you can see here and this is hurricane right and all these are forces of nature and all these forces of nature are caused because of certain reasons which can be explained using science and that is what we are trying to go into to do here right so we're trying to explain how these things are caused all these things can and there are also some precautions to be taken right uh, to uh, when such things happen what are the precautions we have to take right so these are some of the things we're going to see so um, be you know be with me to understand the various concepts in physics and then we'll use those concepts to explain how uh, cyclones happen how hurricanes happen how tornadoes happen how uh, thunderstorms happen right and that's what you're going to do all right now um, <coughs> Now, before getting jumping into explaining how these things happen, let us try to understand the basics, certain basics in science, which will help us to explain how these things happen. Right? So, um, so, uh, so I have actually gone through the introduction. I have already told you what is the the idea of this specific session. Let us get into what what do you mean by pressure right now if you look around you know that there is air around you right we have got the atmosphere and atmosphere is air right but can you see it no you cannot but you know that it exists how do you know it exists how do you know air exists right now have you 
try to get, get onto a cycle and just cycle very fast, what happens? You hear, you feel something is hitting you here, right? All over the body you feel something is hitting you. What is it? It's the air. Air is applying pressure on you, which is, air is applying force on you. You even feel that something is pushing you back, isn't it? That is, who is doing that? That is nothing but the air. So, now we are going to see what does that mean and how does, what does this pressure mean? Because air has a capability of applying force on you and that is through air pressure and how does that happen? Right? That is what we are going to see. But before that I want to give you some examples, right, of the air pressure. So, uh, now here I am showing you a gentleman who is flying a kite in the beach, right? So, he is flying a kite here. You can see the, 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 the kite is being flown, right? Uh, let us go back and see it again. Yeah, he is he's talking about how to fly the kite, but I am not interested in that, in fact. But I want to show you the kite. So, let us go back and look at how that fly kite was flying. A little more back. Sorry for that. So, when you see, you can see the kite is flying and how is that kite flying? How is it? See, kite has got weight. And you know anything which has got weight will fall down. Right? It will fall down. That is why when you jump up, you, your earth is attracting you and the gravitation force is pulling you down. But here the kite is floating in air. Why is it floating? It's because in the beach there is wind and the air is blowing, right? Now it depends upon which direction uh, uh, you've seen, you've heard about the land breeze and the sea breeze and so on. So it depends upon what time of the day it is. Based on it could be a sand, uh, land breeze or a sea breeze. But whatever is around, there is a breeze and uh, the air is is there's, there's wind and the air is applying pressure on this, applying force on the kite upwards to keep it afloat, right? So that is because the air is, and that is because of the pressure which the air is applying. Now, pressure for the time being, I'll explain about the definition of pressure later on, but for the time being, air pressure is nothing but force, right? So air is able to apply force onto the kite upwards uh, because of the breeze and that is leading to the 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 kite uh, not falling down but you know floating in air an example of the capability of air to apply force on objects right and that is because of the wind the wind is able to apply force on the object similarly look at this another example here you are is looking at sailing of a yacht right now how does the, 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 the yacht move forward? The yacht is moving forward because there is breeze, right? Again, the breeze is going and hitting onto the sail. These are the sails and pushing it forward, right? Again, that is because the air is applying. Because of the wind, air is applying force onto the, the sails and it's because of that the, 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 the yacht is moving forward. Again, another example where the air pressure is doing a job. It's applying force onto the sail because of it is moving forward. So again, another example of uh, how the air can apply force on certain objects and make it move and so on. Right? So these are examples which proves that the air actually can apply force on objects. Right? And that, that is where I want to actually talk about air pressure. Right now, let me just um, bring up um, the board and explain to you about what does that mean. Right. So, uh, what does what does it really mean? What does uh, let me just make it a line, plain paper, sorry, I have one line. Okay, now let me just try to explain uh, what does pressure mean, right? Now, uh, what, is, what is pressure? Pressure 
is nothing but force applied per unit area. Yeah, I know that this looks to be a little bit Greek and Latin for you, right? Let me explain what that means, right? Now, uh, let us say that, let us look at the kite, right? Now, let us look at the kite. So, we had the kite here, like that. This was the kite, right? This was a kite which is flying and uh, I don't think that is a good one. Use this. All right. Oops. Sorry. Let me erase this first back here. So, this was the kite, right, which is flying in the air, right? Now, let us say the, 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 the kite was square, so uh, it, and it had probably, it was um, maybe 20 centimeter, one side is 20 centimeter, right? So, it is 20 by 20 centimeter, so this side also will be 20 centimeter. And what is happening is that the wind was blowing and because of the wind was blowing and that wind was applying force on the kite and because it was applying force and pushing the kite up, the kite was remaining float and it was not falling down, right? So that was clear. Now, what does pressure mean, right? Now, the, what is the total area of this kite? The total area of this kite is 20 into 20, which is equal to 400 centimeter square right so the area total area of the kite the total area of the kite is 400 centimeter square okay now what does the pressure mean right now usually the force the force uh, force is usually uh, uh, force the unit of force is Newton so force is force unit is Newton. So, assume the air was applying a force of 10 Newton. 10 Newton. Just assume, right? It may not be 10, it may be 2 or 3, whatever, but assume it is 10 Newton. So, what is pressure, right? Pressure is pressure is force by area which is equal to 10 by 400, right, which will be 1 by 40, which will be um, 0 0.025 Newton per centimeter square. So, that was the pressure which was applied. Pressure is a force which is applied on one unit area. So, if I take one unit area of, you know, one centimeter by 1 centimeter, if I take a unit area on that kite, how much is the force which is applied by air? That is uh, the pressure. So, pressure is force applied per unit area. So, here the 10 Newton was the overall force applied on the kite. The kite's area was 400 centimeter squared. So, 10 by 400, that is 0 0.25 Newton per centimeter squared was basically the pressure applied by air on the kite right so that is what the pressure is and pressure is a very very important um, you know concept which is which is very critical when you explain about uh, you know all these various things like hurricane and all that stuff so understand that pressure is force per unit area anywhere there is a force being applied there is also a pressure which is nothing but force per unit area which you can come calculate if you know the area on which the force is getting applied right and the so that is what it is and here for example the kite flying example we kind of figured out what the pressure mean 
same thing with the the sail the 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 yacht and the sail even there the the air is applying a force on the 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 sail if i take the total area of the sail and if you know the how much is the force being applied then force divided by the total area of the sail gives me the pressure which the the air is exerting on that sail so that is basically what the pressure means right now the 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 so i hope that you understood what uh, what what does pressure mean right uh, all right now let us go back um, and to the presentation so you have seen examples of how the air applies pressure on different things and pressure is nothing but force per unit area and we have also looked at an example right of uh, of computing the pressure all right now how can air apply pressure how can air apply pressure now for that you should understand that air has weight air has weight it is not that air because air is matter it is gas it's a it's of course a mixture of gases it's got nitrogen it's got oxygen it is got carbon dioxide it's got sulfur dioxide it's got nitrous oxide it's got nitrogen dioxide yeah the umpteen number of gases in air but if you look at air as is it is a is gas it is matter and if it is matter any matter will have weight of course when compared to um, uh, a, a piece of iron of course the weight of air is far lighter right but still air does have weight now what is the weight air has got right the 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 density density is you know weight per uh, mass per unit volume right so every meter cube every cubic meter of air weighs 1.184 kilograms every cubic meter of uh, air weighs 1 1.184 kg so air does have weight right now uh, and as and because of that weight it applies force so so let us look at atmosphere atmosphere is a few kilometers right in height now where, uh, if you look at the ground of earth on that ground the air is exerting uh, some force why because the whole 10 kilometer height of air which is standing above the the ground has got weight why because even that air is also attracted by uh, the uh, earth towards it so the air is also uh, uh, you know uh, there is all the gravitational force is also exerted on air it's not that the gravitational force is only applied on solids and liquids alone no it is also applied on gases right because gases also matter so what is happening is that all the 10 kilometer or height of air which is um, standing above the surface of earth that is also being attracted that's also being attracted by earth and because of the attraction the the you know the that air also has got weight and that weight is being exerted it is it is like this right let us let us look at um, let me go back to the board right so let me clear this let's say that uh, this is ground right this is ground and you are standing above it so right so you are standing above it you are standing on the ground now what is really happening now you have some weight assume that you weigh uh, 40 kg so your weight is 40 kg so what is happening is the earth so this ground is actually part of earth right and earth is attracting you so there's a gravitation pull which is exerted on you right and so the what is happening is you are getting attracted and that means there's a gravitational pull and that is what you feel on your legs why after standing for some time your leg starts paining why because of your weight right because your leg is taking all that weight right and then what happens all the weight oops what happened all the weight you have seems to be having a problem just a moment all the weight you have so let me just draw it again so this is a ground right and you are standing above it
right so you're standing about and all the weight is coming through your legs and it goes down and it goes onto the ground right so ultimately your weight is coming to these two points it is going down to the ground right so that means your legs will ultimately be applying a force of your weight onto the ground and then Newton's third law is there and the ground will apply the same force back and so on so let's not get into that but ultimately a force is being applied by you right and why you are why that uh, force is being applied onto the ground is because of your weight and why you have weight is because you are being attracted by uh, earth towards it because of the gravitational force right same thing is happening also with the air because you look at air air is also matter just like the only thing is there it is far more lighter matter but what is happening this air is 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 there all the way for 10 kilometers that's probably the height of your atmosphere and all that air is there above the the surface of earth and that also has a weight and that weight gets applied onto the earth right and because of that force applied the air is also applying a pressure right because force is unit per unit area force per unit area is the pressure so air is applying a pressure on the earth's surface so and that is what is called atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure this is basically the earth up, uh, the pressure applied by the atmosphere on earth right not only on earth on any object which is on the surface so in fact when you are sitting when you are standing like this in fact atmospheric pressure is acting on your body throughout because atmospheric the pressure is acted on all directions right so on all directions that is where you don't feel right so pressure uh, there is atmospheric pressure on this side atmospheric pressure on this side and both are equal and so they are equal forces so you don't know both the, both of them cancel each other right but there is atmospheric pressure even acting on you in fact right so what is happening is that this atmospheric pressure is there all over everywhere and that is the force applied by air because of its weight right and you should understand that that's what is atmospheric pressure I'm going to show you more examples to establish the fact of there is something called atmospheric pressure which exists right now uh, so so the pressure applied by atmosphere is the atmospheric pressure. I want to show you a few videos to kind of... Uh... So first I want to demonstrate what does pressure mean? Why is pressure caused? Why is pressure caused by air? Right? Now look at this uh, specific video. Now you can see there's a basketball. It is not filled with air right now. It's only little air is there. And when there's little air, what is happening is there are a few molecules of air which are there inside. And these, these molecules, gas molecules are moving around randomly. Let us, let me play that video. Right? Moving around randomly. And they also go and hit. They also go and hit the, uh, the, the walls of the, uh, now what is happening? You can see that somebody is pumping more and more air. And what is happening is, more and more air is going inside the ball and that means there are more and more molecules of air which is getting into the ball and so what happens is that so why is the pressure cost why is the pressure cost is because the molecules of go of air is going and hitting the wall it's going and hitting the wall of the ball and that is why there is a pressure right now when there are more molecules hitting the wall there will be more pressure why there are more molecules because you are pumping more and more air into the ball so when so that is what is happening you can see here what is happening right now you can see there are more and more molecules which are getting in the ball and because of that the pressure is increasing you can see the pressure here right pressure is increasing right now uh, so so understand uh, the effect of pressure and why the pressure is happening right the pressure is happening because of the movement of molecules and the molecules going and hitting the walls of the ball and that is making the pressure right now when you are adding when you are pumping in more and more air into the ball what is happening is there are more and more molecules of air which is being pumped into the ball and so more and more molecules starts hitting the wall and because of the pressure increases right so the more molecules hit the wall more pressure right so that is basically what is happening so understand this is what the underlying physics is the reason why we'll think 
There nothing I do. I don't see anything in here saying some pressure is happening. Why is this pressure is happening? Pressure is happening because there are molecules in that air, and that those molecules are going and hitting the 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 walls, the ball. And when there are more molecules hitting, the pressure becomes more, right? So that is basically what's happening, and and that hitting is the is producing the pressure or the force which uh, the air is applying, right? So that is what is happening. I hope you understood what what I'm saying. Right now, I want to illustrate the 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 egg that illustrate or prove that atmospheric pressure exists. I know that I've given you enough proofs. I showed you the kite is flying, uh, but that is that is actually force because of the breeze. So I know I made you understand that the air can apply force, but I want to prove that something called atmospheric pressure exists, and the air, the atmosphere, can apply. Pre uh, uh, force on you or pressure on you that's what i want to show through this experiment right so I'll just look at this experiment observe it so here what is happening is that the scientist the scientist has poured water up the brim of the glass so the glass is completely filled with water that means there's no there's no space for the air right till the brim of the glass has been filled with air and then what let us see what he is doing he is actually going to he is just covering he is covering the glass using a cardboard right he is covering the glass using cardboard now look at very interesting thing and you can try this out yourself if you want right now see what he is going to do he has inverted right he has inverted and he is just invert he is keep uh, holding the glass upside down and you can see the water is not flowing down so is the water flowing down? what did you expect oh what you are just covering with one cardboard what's the point that water is heavy it will just flow out right that's what you expected but it is not why is it not why is it not flowing out let me explain that to you right so what is happening is as follows so there is a glass right which is filled with water so now you have and then there is a cardboard here there is a cardboard right this is a cardboard and this is full of water this is full of water there is no air inside at all right because it was filled to up to the brim with water so this is full of water this is full of water now I know that the water is weight and so water will be applying force on the cardboard right because it has got weight because the water is also attracted by uh, the by our plant by earth and so the water wants to flow out because of the weight it has got but what is happening is that there is atmospheric pressure which is pushing it up because I told you pressure is on all directions pressure is there on all directions so here pressure is there so if you look at the atmospheric pressure at this point it is there in this direction this direction this direction this direction this direction all directions it is there same pressure at any point right so you learn this in further later on uh, in physics when you get into details of properties of gases and and you look at pascal's law and charles law and lot of things lot of interesting things so wait for that but till then you understand that the atmospheric pressure the pressure will be there in all directions so here the pressure will be there in upward directions also right so what is happening is now the atmospheric pressure is pushing the the, the cardboard um, up and the water is trying to push it down but the weight because the atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure is because of the the 10 kilometer or more of air which is above that force is higher than the force exerted by water because of its weight and that is why the water is not flowing now so it is as if it is safely pushed up and the water is not able to push it down because of the atmospheric pressure which is being applied on the cardboard box by the atmosphere you please try this out and it's a very very interesting thing you may wonder why the water is staying there and the reason is because of atmospheric pressure right so that is the, the the explanation for this particular video so you can see that it is safely the water is standing there and nothing is happening right and it is not going down right so let me stop this video right 
I hope you understood the 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 trick here of uh, the, what the atmospheric atmosphere is doing. I want to actually show you one more thing, which is basically called the barometer, the mercury barometer, which again proves the fact that there's something called atmospheric pressure, right? Now, mercury barometer is an apparatus which is used to measure atmospheric pressure in a place in olden days. Of course, now we have better apparatus, but uh, it used to be used even now in certain places. Mercury barometer is used to measure the atmospheric pressure. Now, how does the mercury barometer work? Right? So, now here the professor is actually th this is a glass tube. What she's holding is a thin glass tube. Inside that, um, it's hollow right and uh, one side of the glass tube is closed the other side is open and through that he she has poured uh, mercury and in fact now the mercury is there up to here and what she's going to do is she's going to use a filler and fill the mercury till the brim of the tube you can see that let, let us see what she does so now she's going to fill it it's she's filling it you can see it's, she's filling it up to the brim of the tube, right? So she's filling it up to the brim of the tube and then she is holding a finger on it and then she is immersing, immersing that into a jar where there is mercury, right? Jar where there is mercury. Do you see that? Now this is mercury again. What is there in the container is mercury and then what is happening? So what is happening? Let, let me see, let me also draw it and show it to you. So first, let me just clear this. First, there was a tube here like this. And she filled mercury till the brim, right? So there's mercury all over up to the brim of the tube. And then there was a vessel where she had collect, taken some mercury. And then what she did is she closed this using a finger. So this is a finger right so this is a finger and then dipped the and inverted inverted the tube and dip the this this end into the mercury right upside down so so now what happened is it sorry upside down and so it's now like this right and this is all mercury now what happens is, sorry, now what happens is, as soon as she does that, what happens is that some mercury will flow out of this tube, some mercury will flow out of this tube, but it comes and stands like this. What is it here? It is, this is vacuum, there is no, because there was no air at all in the tube, right? So there's no air at all in the tube. So when the mercury goes out, what is there here is a vacuum. It's vacuum. So this is vacuum. Right? Now, but still the whole mercury is not flowing out. There's some mercury which stands in the tube and this much mercury is how is it standing why is it not completely flowing out is because is because there is atmospheric pressure being applied here which is pushing the mercury up so this mercury is standing in the tube because of the atmospheric pressure so if i uh, if i can measure how much pressure is applied by now i know that you need to know pascal's law uh, you know well for for this but you know only try to understand that why this mercury is not completely flowing out and staying inside the tube is because it is because the uh, because of the atmospheric pressure and that atmospheric pressure is pushing the mercury in up and that is why uh, all the mercury is not flowing out of the tube right just understand that and that is again another example of proving that something called atmospheric pressure is existing. So I've shown you the, the water glass experiment and I've also shown you the mercury barometer, the two things which proves there is atmospheric pressure and there is pressure applied by the air in the atmosphere 
and uh, that can be felt and, and these two experiments are proofs uh, for that. So that is basically about it. So let me just continue showing it. Oops. So you can see now, you can see now, I, I'm not, I don't think you're able to see it. Probably there is a short close up. You can see that the mercury is there up to here, right? And the reason why that mercury is there up to here is because you can see is there up to here and it is 744 mm, mm, millimeter, millimeter of mercury column is still there in the tube and that is because the atmospheric pressure is pushing and that is the reason why that mercury is staying in the tube right and not completely flowing out all right fine so that is actually another proof that there is something called atmospheric pressure which exists okay fine now let me just go back and uh, click on the presentation so I hope you understood about atmospheric pressure and uh, you understood about those experiments which proves there's something the atmospheric pressure exists right now let us actually get into another property the other property which I want to show is when the air moves at very high speeds the pr the the pressure of air uh, is reduced that is another thing which I want to show you right a very interesting phenomena in fact later on you will study this if you are studying uh, fluid mechanics you will study what you call Bernoulli's theorem Bernoulli's gosh no today I'm making a lot of spelling mistakes Bernoulli's Bernoulli's theorem right this is uh, uh, this is uh, one of the laws in fluid mechanics, which can be proved, but uh, that's not, not that's out of outside the scope. But the this phenomena, where when the air is uh, flowing in very high speeds, the pressure there gets reduced, can be explained using Bernoulli's principle. Right now, I'm not going to explain what is Bernoulli's principle because that requires you to know calculus and all that stuff right so don't worry about that but I just want to tell you that something called Bernoulli's theorem exists and that can explain this phenomenon now let me just show you an exper experiment here which kind of uh, shows this fact right uh, look at what this gentleman is doing Oops. is the browser going for a toss okay now here you can see oops here you can see what what the gentleman has done he has put two coke uh, tin scans very close to each other and what he's going to do is he's going to blow air in that gap right air in that gap now let us see now what is really happening before all this is happening uh, what is happening is that you have two jars right so before he blows what what is the scene let us look at that right uh, so before he blows so there are two cans here one can like that and there's another can like that so before he blows what is happening there's atmospheric pressure so there's atmospheric pressure here atmospheric pressure here there's atmospheric pressure here atmospheric pressure here everywhere is atmospheric pressure everywhere there's atmospheric pressure right so since atmospheric pressure is the same on both sides it's not moving everything is fine right you agree fine now what is happening is that let us see what happens now now he's blowing and you can see what happens when he's blowing between the two tins or cans since there is very high velocity air or high speed air passing the pressure there goes down right so now what is happening is the pressure here is smaller than the pressure smaller than atmospheric pressure right so the pressure here the pressure here reduces pressure reduces because you have very high speed air flowing through that so pressure here reduces whereas pressure here is still atmospheric pressure right so here it is atmospheric pressure
right whereas here it is less than atmospheric pressure why is it less than atmospheric pressure because high speed air had been flowing so here pressure is lower and so what happens so here there is a higher force and here is a lower force so the higher force will push inside and so both sides here also there is atmospheric pressure so there is a net force higher force which is acting from outside to inside because the the pressure here is lower and that is why the two cancel moving against each other you understood so because the high speed air was flowing here the pressure reduced there because of that the force applied by air in within between the cans has gone down whereas the force which is applied outside on the outside part of the can is still at most pressure and so what is happening there is a net force which is acting towards inside and that is why the cans are moving in together itself. interesting isn't it so that is an experiment which shows uh, what happens in uh, uh, when the when high speed air flows it actually reduces the pressure right just wanted to show you once again here we go here we go another example two paper flaps right now you have two paper flaps which is hanging and he is blowing air between the two paper flaps using a, a air blower and you can see that they are coming near each other what is what is happening here again the same thing the same thing is happening right at this point when very high speed air is flowing through this the pressure here is lower whereas outside pressure is atmospheric pressure and this pressure is lower than atmospheric pressure because there is very high speed air going because of the, the pressure air goes down because of that and so net there is a force be acting on both these flaps inward and that's where they are closing, closing up each other so again another example of showing that when a very high speed air flows the pressure there goes down right so uh, so these these are experiments which kind of shows and as I told you this really can be explained in physics by using Bernoulli's theorem right which which probably you learn later on okay fine now let us uh, let us go back and uh, uh, look at yeah now another place where this particular principle is made use of is for aircrafts do you know aircrafts are flying up why, why how is the aircraft being lifted up you know air, aircrafts are tons it's got tons of weight it's very heavy and it's carrying 300 400 people inside the uh, engine is heavy the body is heavy how is it able to lift itself up who is pushing that who is pushing it up very very interesting point and that is what I want to explain through this particular video So here you can see that the aircraft is pretty heavy and but still it is able to fly up in the sky right and how is that happening the reason why that is happening is because the air now I, this is actually a jet plane and this is actually a jet engine and in jet engine what is happening inside is what it's got what is called a gas turbine where the fuel is, is, is burning and it is heating up air and it is pushing it out and because of that it is it is moving forward very fast right now there is Newton's law in action and uh, there is thermodynamics a lot of things happening but ultimately it is because of the engine this engine the the plane is pushed thrusted forward right but that still this engine is still not making it flying up for who is pushing pushing it up right that is the question that is because of the specific shape of a wing you can see that the wing you can see the shape of the wing the shape of the wing is there is a curve here and here it is flat then there is a curve here now what is happening is that because of the the, the engine where the, which you have here this is the engine because of the engine the the plane is moving forward very fast and at that point what is happening is the air starts flowing over the wind wings and what is happening is that because of the specific shape of the wing the air which is flowing above the wing will be moving at a higher speed than the air which is below the wing and because of the higher speed the pressure here is lower and so ultimately what happens 
the pressure here is higher than pressure here and because of that the there is a net force which is pushing the plane up this is why the plane is able to uh, fly up and that is how and this is basically what gives the lift uh, for the uh, in, in physics it's called the lift lift for the uh, the plane so the the reason is because the wind is which is blowing over the wing is blowing at a higher speed than the wind which is blowing below the wind because of the specific shape of the wing right and uh, because of that the pressure which is above the wing is lower than because the speed is higher the pressure is lower than the pressure which is below the wing and because of that the pressure because below the wing is higher and so it is pushing up right so that is what is happening so very very interesting point I think this is the basic principle because of which the airplane is getting the lift and that is what is pushing the airplane up and that is how it is able to fly right so I hope that you got the understanding and again is because the faster air leads to a lower pressure that is the principle which is which is being used actually and that is and that is happening because of the specific design of the wing right now look at another example here right so so you can see that the pressure below is higher than the pressure above and because of that there is an ultimate force which is be which is pushing the plane up so that is basically about the planes lift now look at the another example here right here I am showing how very fast wind which is blowing over the roof just pulls the roof roof up why that is happening right now let us look at this you can see how the the roof is being pulled up by because there's a very fast strong wind is which is blowing over the roof and see how the roof is just ripped apart ripped off and this is very common uh, when there is very strong winds like in hurricanes and all that you can see this happening very often and the roofs just plucked or pulled out by the wind why is that happening again I can explain it right now let me go back to the board and uh, let me try to explain that so so uh, let me just clear this uh, so what is happening is now you have a roof like this right wind is blowing over this very strong wind whereas below below so this is a roof right and right this is a wall right and this is a roof and below here what pressure is there this pressure is atmospheric pressure before the wind was blowing above was also atmospheric pressure so up below also atmospheric pressure above also atmospheric pressure things are fine equal forces no issues now what is happening is that suddenly strong wind is blowing and when there's very fast high speed air passing what happens the pressure reduces so there is a lower pressure now so here now the there is a pressure low pressure because of the high speed wind right so there's a lower pressure here there's a atmospheric pressure here right which is higher than this lower pressure it was atmospheric pressure before but now it is low, less than that because of the high speed wind and so the atmospheric pressure is pushing it up that is what is happening right atmospheric pressure is pushing it up because that is higher than the pressure which is applied from above because that is lower than atmospheric pressure so there's a net force which is acting upward which just pushes that the roof out and it just pull out plugged out right and it is going and flying away right again this is what is happening so you can see how the pressure is reduced because of high speed wind or high speed air moving uh, how the pressure gets reduced and what is the impact you've seen how the plane is lifted up you have seen uh, the impact how the roof roof is pulled out right and you also seen how the two cans come close to each other when he she he used a, a tube and blew uh, through the gap between the two uh, cans so all this is beautiful it's got beautiful explanation using physics that is why learning science is fun now next time when this happens you can explain to your friend friend the reason is because high speed wind means lower pressure and so because of that these kind of things are happening and 
you can also add it is because and this can be explained in physics by using Bernoulli's theorem I not learned it but I learn it tomorrow <laughs> all right fine good so now let us let us uh, let us continue with the presentation right so let us several things be explained using this principle right and that's great so uh, so I think let me just sum up so we have actually looked at the con uh, we looked at what is pressure and we looked at we saw that air can exert pressure then we found that atmosphere applies pressure and that's called atmospheric pressure and at any point it is applied in all directions right and then we proved that something called atmospheric pressure exists by using uh, that inverted um, you know the water water and glass experiment and also the the mercury barometer right then we looked at the effect of what happens to the pressure when high speed air when there's high speed when the air moves at very high speed we found that the pressure goes down and uh, we kind of I showed you a lot of instances to prove that that happens and I also showed certain instances where there is many of like the the lift which the airplane gets is actually precisely because of the same reason